What makes you different from every other government contracting company? Whether you've asked yourself this question or not, the government buyer has definitely asked that question. In this video, I'm sharing three things that will make you stand out with the government. You can find me over at FeliciaStreeter.com where I help small businesses, minority-owned businesses, uh, search disabled vet, woman-owned small businesses win contracts with the federal government. Also, while you're here, make sure you subscribe to the channel, turn on the notification bell, and like this video. on my channel and you haven't subscribed why not it's time for you to partner with me on your journey to becoming a government contractor so go ahead subscribe turn on the notification bell and let's get to it when you have what the government is looking for you can attract that government body i've helped my clients inside my government contractor accelerated program stand out with the government buyer and you can too. The first thing we're going to talk about here as we dive into how you can stand out as a government contractor is one, through your capability statement. Now, this is the marketing tool that you will use to attract the government buyer, to let them know who you are, what you do. It's kind of like your resume, but it's a business resume, okay? So in the federal government uh, arena, we use our capability statement as a marketing tool. Now, within that capability statement, one of the things that will make you stand out and make you difference is your experience. So you may have unique experience in what you're offering or just the experience that you have overall. Because let me tell you, a lot of companies start their business and in the beginning, they don't have any experience. So you may have a leg up on the next company because you have experience in the type of work that you're seeking from the government. Maybe you've worked with the government customer before. That's also a leg up for you. They already know who you are, how you work. They know you'll complete your projects on time, within budget, right? And, and you're a good company to work with. Communication is there in case things come up because we all know that all projects don't go um, smoothly right so there could be some hiccups but they really look at how do you handle those hiccups so if you work with a particular government agency before that's also a benefit and something that will make you stand out now if your company is required to have bonding that is definitely a game changer that will definitely make you stand out and you definitely want to make sure you're showcasing your bonding how much bonding do you have you know single and aggregate you want to let them know what your bonding limits are now, I've had clients that I work with that they've created something unique. They may have a um, patent on something they created. And so if that's the case for you, that will definitely make you stand out as well because now you have this unique product or this unique service or software that you came up with that no one else have at the time. And so that'll also make you stand out. Now, in your marketing, you may have to uh, do some extra things to just educate right the government on your unique idea or unique product that you have because they haven't seen it before but it still will make you stand out so definitely you want to have your capability statement and showcasing the right things that will make you stand out also on your capability statement you want to talk about your company mission statement and in your mission statement you also want to make sure you're talking about it from the government perspective as well as far as how your mission will help them solve their problems. So how you want to assist them, how you want to help them in achieving their goals. Make sure you have that in your mission statement as well, if that's the case for your company. Now, this is basic, but I'm going to say it because I feel it needs to be said because I see a lot of capability statements that do not have this one thing. How to contact you. Not only how to contact you, give them a person's name. A lot of times I'll see an info at uh, maybe the company URL or info or something generic at gmail.com. Let them know who to contact. Like, what is that person name that they should talk to? What is their direct uh, email address and also a direct phone number for that person? You know, they're not going to um, run all around trying to find out who they should be contacting within your company. Make it easy for them. So definitely put your contact information. 
All right, the second thing that will make you stand out is your capacity. I talk a lot about capacity. Uh, if you don't know what I'm talking about, I do have a free webinar that I do, so you can definitely check that out. Um, three Secrets to Win Government Contracts. It's a free webinar I do, so we talk about capacity. I break it down. But for these purposes here, when we talk about capacity, uh, you want to showcase your ability to float projects until they can float themselves. You also want to talk about the people, the resources that you have. So if you have team par teaming partners that you're going to work with, if you have employees, independent contractors, whoever you have relationships with and you know you can depend on them, even if it's employees, but you want to let them know uh, that you have the manpower to deliver on the promise, to deliver on what they're asking for. And then also, just depending on what you're doing, whether it's a service or product, more so a service, if you need special equipment or tools or anything like that, you want to let them know that you either already have those things or you have access to those things. All right. So you want to let them know your capacity. All right. You also want to let them know what makes you different, what makes you stand out from the next company. Now, comment below before I get into this last one. What do you feel make you different from other companies in your industry? Let me know down in the comments. Your customers want to know, what do you bring to the table? What makes you different and why they should choose you? And at the end of the day, you need to know what you bring to the table. I remember where I partnered with another company on a project and you know, you talk about what you bring to the table and for this particular deal, let me tell you, it wasn't about the money. For them, they already had money. They had those type of resources. But what I did have and that they didn't have was some of the certifications that I had. Now, you might say, well, most companies have the certifications. Uh, that's true. But I also had the ability to do work on the project as well. So what did I bring to the table? my certifications, but I also was able to perform some of the work. And so they like that, you know, where you can actually perform some of the work as well on the project. So you want to make sure you start building up your experience now. If you don't have any, if you have experience, make sure you're showcasing that in addition to whatever the other things that you have. And we all know um, the certifications out there, everybody does not have the certifications. They do not qualify for all certifications. So yeah, you can showcase your certifications, but let me just say your certifications alone is not enough. All right. So you want to make sure you also have the ability to perform on the project. So bring it all to the table. Everything that you have, bring it to the table because you never know what that one thing will be that they're looking for that will allow you to close that deal. The third thing we're going to talk about is experience. So I want to dive a little bit deeper into experience. So when you talk about past performance, you want to make sure you're talking about the size of the projects you're able to handle, the length of the projects, as well as the value of the projects. All of that will also help your contracting officer, uh, the government agency in determining what size a project they will award to you. All right. So what does this tell them really? So the value of the project, you know, will tell them one, that you're able to manage the money of a project at that size. Length of the project tells them that you have the stability to complete a project, especially if it was a long-term project that you're not going to just run off midway through the project and go ghost on them. Okay. And then also, um, just the size of the project in and of itself, you know, you're able to handle a large project or a small project, whatever the size is, you want to make sure you're showcasing that as well. Also, when you're looking at opportunities that you're going to bid, you want to make sure you're bidding opportunities that you have experience in. So you want to show them that you've already done work in that sector of the market, uh, whatever it is, if you're offering a service for sure. Now, of course, we know products, you don't always have to have experience, right? So I'm really talking about services here as far as having experience. You want to show them that you have experience doing the type of work of the contract that you're bidding. All right. So you make sure you read the scope of work and then you want to make sure you're addressing uh, the scope of work in your past performance, in your experience, and showing them you've done similar projects. Now, we talked about bonding, but let me just say this. If you are required to have bonding, bonding will definitely put you ahead of a lot of companies because a lot of companies cannot acquire bonding. 
or they wait until they see an opportunity and then they're trying to scramble and go get bonding and it just doesn't work like that. Bonding does not work like insurance. You walk in, you come out with insurance. It doesn't work like that. The process is a lot longer. And so I want to encourage you, if you know you're going to need bonding, start working on your bonding today. Find you a bonding agency and start working with them today to get your company bonding. When you show the government agency that you have bonding, it's kind of like a pre-screening in and of itself because it's a process. And so they know if you're able to get bonding, then you're a reputable company for sure. So that'll also make you stand out with your government agencies. So there you have it. Three areas you can start focusing on as you build out your government contracting business so that you can start standing out and being more attractive to your government customers. Now, if you need help, if you like my help in achieving your government contracting goals and some support as you go along your government contracting journey, definitely check out my government contractor accelerator program. I'll put the link down below and I can help you inside of there, taking you from wherever you are right now, right? And taking you to the finish line of becoming a government contractor. So definitely check it out. Our next group call is happening soon. So don't miss out. Don't forget to like this video. And if you're new here, partner with me, go ahead, subscribe to the channel, turn on the notification bell so you get notified when we drop new videos and when we go live, because we're bringing that back here this year. All right, so remember, you're just one contract away. Bye for now.